My name is Kendia Gray. Everybody calls me Renee. I contract the HIV shooting using needles. I got diagnosed in 97. I was using drugs for 32 years. When I found out, I found out from an HIV truck and it was like so impersonal. Well, I didn't tell, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody. And my cousin, me and her called each other a favorite cousin. So when they found out, they was like, why you didn't tell nobody? I was like, I didn't bring y'all into my drug addiction. So why would I bring you into uh, my sentence? I was, it was just spiraling out of control. And that's what it is. It's a grips of addiction that leads to institutions, jails, or death. I was anointed to go through what I went through. I said, no more, no more drugs. If somebody beat us up like we beat ourselves up, we'd be ready to fight. So that's when I was like, that makes so much sense, so I'm gonna fight. And that's when I started looking for help. And it have not been easy, but drugs are no longer in my story. And what I'm doing today is I reach out to anybody that need help or need encouragement or just a good word or some tough love. My dream has just gotten bigger and bigger. And then I'm doing photography. I'll be published in November. I came out of my shell and just went crazy volunteering. City Uprising is a day where throughout the city there is sort of a coordinated effort to get as many people tested and screened for HIV as possible. City Uprising is just phenomenal that, you know, at one time, on one day, you know, throughout the city of Baltimore, people can get tested. My prayer is that we will reach our goal, 1,000 people being tested on one day. Well, City Uprising to me is like a day that gives uh, Baltimore hope. Dry is not in our vocabulary anymore. It's, we are going to test a thousand people today. I think just to be a great influence and be able to teach people and be able to have people have understanding about what HIV is, that it isn't a death sentence, and just understand like the disease process and things like that. It's important for us to recognize that it's very difficult um, to get tested for HIV. In area codes like this, about one in 30 people um, are living with HIV, so everybody in this community knows somebody who's living with HIV or somebody who's died of AIDS. Um, and so people will say yes when they're met by a friendly volunteer who encourages them. And some people don't want to be tested, but they don't want to say no. And when we have the boldness to go in community and encourage people to be tested, um, it's a great way to say we care and to let people know their status, whether it's HIV negative or positive. About 60% of people in Baltimore under the age of 30 um, who have HIV do not know. So the only way for them to know is for us to do things like this that allow them to be tested. Um, us being here is really, it's not just nice, it's necessary. To me, it's more important to know what's going on with your body because that, whether your result is negative, whether your result is positive, we're going to know exactly what's going on and we can know the steps to take care of yourself in the future. And that's the most important thing. Face your fears. The fact that you might be fearful that you might have something, that in itself shows that you should get tested so that if there is something, you can get help. There's free help here. They're here to help you. So just come on and get help. It's always better to know. It's scary what the might be, might be, but it's always better to know. For every life we save, there's a community being saved by each other. So that's what it's all about. When I hit the bottom, do you know how they said we fall down but we get up? Yeah. When I got up, I got up running. <laughs> so HIV, I'm, I'm living well with it. That's, that's my story.